What is up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flood Vicarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're going to rank a topic that is of the utmost importance. Metal masks. I And hey, if you'd like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Alright, I actually got some help kind of crowdsourcing some of the options for this list uh, on the Discord. You should definitely join us there, but definitely some homies from Fainer, Metal Forge Reviews, Pair of Jeans Reviews, The Metal Meltdown. All of them kind of came together to, to give me some extra ideas in addition to the obvious ones I was thinking about. But yeah, we are going to talk about metal bands wearing masks and ranking them solely based on those masks and then we we threw in some other choices here for fun as well for for fun and glory now let's start with a big one here i actually have slipknot on here twice and <laughs> it's because they've gone through a lot of iterations i even considered having each iteration on here but that's a lot so starting with just their original masks the og slipknot masks this is s tier for me iconic i remember seeing this cd in the record store and just like staring at it i'll even frequently just take it off my shelf and i'm just kind of mesmerized by just how just creepy and eerie they look and i love how just like diy they they look and everything they're they're really ratty and kind of gross i i gotta say i was a little disappointed like even going into the iowa cycle when uh cory kind of changed his out because i just that original mask is just so iconic, and I think every member of the band has kind of a cool look on this one. Well, let's move forward to <laughs> definitely one of the worst things on here. We've got Psychosexual with his stupid fucking devil look. Uh, first of all, this album is garbage and if you want to hear more about that uh the metal meltdown did a very popular review on this album but we're talking about masks right and even in masks i'm gonna put this at f tier it's just so low effort it's just the typical cliche you know red devil look there's no like extra anything to make it stand out and be unique and be its own thing it's just like oh that's what a devil looks like and they threw it together sucks all right, then we got Buckethead. Good old Buckethead. I know he's not really necessarily a metal musician per se, but but we had to have Buckethead on here, right? Interesting look and kind of the opposite, I would say, sort of a psychosexual in that, you know, at least here, like he's taking like a very kind of simple, generic white mask and then the, the KFC bucket, man. It's just like it's everything. Somehow he's taking these very generic things and putting them together to create something pretty unique and you immediately recognize him. And that's something I feel like you have to rate some of these masks on is recognizability, brand recognition. So I'm going to go ahead and put Buckethead at A tier for that. Then we've got the Locust. Locust, just kind of basic, the ski masks with a little bit of like a, a little extra like cutouts on them, um, with a little bit of extra effort into it. They've got a cool look to them, a little bit less on the recognizability. Obviously, they're kind of a smaller band, too, so it's a little unfair to, to go there. They're, they're fine. I'm going to put them at C tier. I think that feels fair. Then we have Mushroom Head. Never been a big Mushroom Head fan. Their masks are kind of cool, though, and I'll give them that, that they have some recognizable qualities, especially like the main one that they'll frequently use in, in artwork. It has kind of a cool aesthetic and design to it. Um, yeah, it's pr pretty, pretty decent. Go ahead and put them at A for now. I think, I think they put enough effort into it and they've got enough of that, again, recognition factor to deserve that. But dipping down again in the opposite direction, we have Lordy. <laughs> and oh, Lordy, uh, not, not great here. Uh, total cringe, if you ask me. And the, the, they just don't look good. Like, they've got some recognizability factor, but it just feels like a mishmash of, like, too many ideas and it doesn't all come together and it all just kind of looks cheap too but not in the cool kind of like slipknot do it yourself way i i don't even know how to say it i'm gonna go ahead and put this at d tier i think hollywood undead another band that i am not at all a fan of and tend to cringe heartily at but hey if you if you like it philosophy of the channel is always like if you enjoy it great good for you i'm happy for you uh, not for me. The masks, too. 
I'm on the fence with these guys because like they're pretty generic masks, but they did put enough kind of touches into it and create enough of like a band look that if I see them somewhere, I'm going to know it's Hollywood Undead. So eh, they're, they're kind of, I'd say probably like C tier for this one. All right. And then Pair of Jeans Reviews recommended this one, but would not tell me who it is. Just said it's a homie. <laughs> It would not give me something specific to shout out with it, but uh, I I ended up including it, and I'm not going to take it out. So uh, as far as this mask goes, it's kind of cool. I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I'm going to go ahead and put that one a B tier. I don't have a ton to say about it because, again, I have, like, no <laughs> reference point for that. Imperial Triumphant, one of the newer groups on this list. Love Imperial Triumphant, love their music, but we're talking about the masks, and, again, I, I love it. I think it's S tier. They've got that, like, they did a great job, too, of not only are they instantly recognizable and it's become such a, like, snap, you see it and you know what band it is, kind of recognition factor, but also it's deeply tied into their concept and sound. I actually have an interview with these guys that you should definitely check out, but a lot of their sound and their ideas of their songs go into the idea of just New York City, all the great monumental things and all the terrible CD underground things that are going on there, and all that also is tied into this Art Deco aesthetic, trying to capture that idea visually. And they definitely nailed that in the masks, too. Also, there's, of course, that Metropolis influence, if you're aware of the famous silent film. But yeah, S tier, easily. We've got Era on a similar note. Kind of cool. I always, like, it catches my attention. I feel like it doesn't have quite the same, like, striking quality that Imperial Triumphant does. But it's it's on to something. It's on to something. And it's more than just the hood. So there's that. <laughs> and I like the like the white mask with the red robes. It kind of has like almost like a geisha kind of vibe to it. I'm going to put it at B tier. Right, we got Guar. Legends, man. Legends. So you got to give it to them. They're unique as fuck. The whole concept behind them. Again, it's tied into the whole vibe of their sound. So like, you know, Slipknot, it ties into the aesthetic but with Guar, it's like deeply woven into the fabric of who they are as a band. These <laughs> these intergalactic aliens that have come to to destroy us and cause havoc, basically. I got to give it S tier for just the original concept behind it. And there's clearly, again, they each have their own different look, but they're all kind of tied together by the same concept. We can go ahead and do the latest iteration of the Slipknot masks, and I gotta say, I'm not particularly a fan. There are a few of them I really like. Like, there are some on here that are kind of cool, some that still just harken back to the old days. You know, you got certain band members who just like to kind of stick with what they had, mostly from the beginning, and make minor tweaks to it. But the, the deciding factor for me here is Corey's mask, and I just... I can't stand it. I, I hate the new mask. I hated the last one, too, like the old man look. It just feels like such a waste, too, because he had his new mask designed by the one, the only Tom Savini, who is a horror movie legend <laughs> behind a lot of great special effects and creature looks. And it just is this weird, ugly thing. But I'm ranking the whole band, so it's it's not quite F tier. I'm going to put it at I'm going to put it at a. D tier. That's going to be upsetting to some people because I put them under Hollywood Undead, but, you know, fight me. <laughs> of course, we got Ghost. Now, of course, the front man, more so face paint, but you, you've got his minions with the cool little silver mask. I always like the look of these. I think they're really neat. And uh, just the whole band has, again, that, like, striking look you immediately know who they are. They're designed so well to, like, they always talk about how you need to have a strong profile for, like, creature work and stuff like that. And I feel like even if you turn the lights off and you had, like, a band pick of them and profile, you would know who it was. And that counts for a lot. I'm going to go ahead and put that at A tier. All right, then we have Necrogoblicon. All right, I love Necrogoblicon. Now, the band just go... It's, it's an interesting vibe with these guys because the band is just a band. Like, they're not wearing costumes or anything. And they have to basically act like it's totally normal that they have this guy in full goblin garb and full, like, Hollywood-level makeup just <laughs> cavorting around with them. And then they've got a podcast and, like, run by the goblin. They've really built a cool brand out of this. I do like the look of him. They put a lot, clearly put a lot of effort, probably expense too, in, in getting him dressed up like that. Because he looks like movie ready. Um, the look is a little generic. There's nothing like particularly new or special. Like you throw him into like a Lord of the Rings movie or something and, you know, he'll kind of get lost in the crowd. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that at A tier, not quite S tier, but really solid effort. Oh, and then of course we have this guy, uh, S tier. Obviously, you know, can't can't get better than that. This is just an iconic look at this point, right? All right, and then we've got this classic mask in the death core scene right now. Another one where like the minute you see it, you know it. But yeah, this is Slaughter to Prevail, and yeah, I gotta give them a lot of credit. Like they've really built this out into something that i mean it's you can buy it now too like they've turned it into a merch item which is duh like how smart is that you know so many other bands probably should have thought of this but um is it unique is it different it reminds me a little bit of like a more demented demonic version of like the donnie darko mask which i actually have in here <laughs> um and then i I, th I think it's cool i think it's cool it's not quite s tier but I'm going to put that one at A tier as well. Like, it, it stands out. You immediately know who it is. It's got that recognition factor. And it, it looks pretty cool. All right, but now we're just moving into the fun stuff here. Okay, okay. <laughs> we got the Scream mask, ghost face. Always a cool look. It's not, like, great, but it's so simple. Like, they took this simple thing and they turned it into an icon. And uh, I, I'm going to put that at, like, B tier, I think. It's solid, but there are, there are better options out there. Um, another, you know, musically focused thing here, but not metal related. We've got MF Doom, rest in peace. This guy, legendary. If you're not familiar with the rap of MF Doom, you need to educate yourself because this guy could spit. <laughs> he was excellent. And then he always did it wearing this Dr. Doom mask, which is really cool. Another iconic look. I'm going to put that at S tier. There's a reason why it ended up being, like, focal point of famous album covers. Like, it just stands out. Got The Strangers. Another case of where, like, it's a cool look. Not the most unique. Um, kind of recycling a lot of old ideas here. It's not quite as good as Ghostface either. I'm gonna put that at C tier, I think. Just average. Oh, I forgot Portal. I still had Portal on here. So Portal has a number of different looks, but the classic one for me is this clock head thing that they did and i just think that's super cool now i got i can't rank it as high because it's not like they're all the time look but i do appreciate that they're doing something like totally different than everyone else and it's it's just a neat look i'm gonna put that at b tier pyramid head from silent hill and we're talking silent hill 2 where he belongs love this i know we're also getting into like helmet territory here technically it's not really a mask you could also argue that it is his head so you know whatever but Somebody brought it up in the Discord, and I was like, you're speaking my language, dog, because <laughs> I fucking love me some Silent Hill. S tier for Pyramid Head. Such a unique, weird, eye-catching look. Skeletor. Skeletor's great. Another one where we could argue that this is just his face. It's not really a mask, but, you know, great look. Fun, fun, yeah. <laughs> fun voice. I love when they have him on Robot Chicken. Um, but just, just kind of a skull. Not a lot of additional. The purple hood gives it a little bit more more of a of a look i'm still just gonna put skeletor i think at like c tier bane from the dark knight rises <laughs> i was born in the dark i mean if i was ranking voices then that would be s tier but as far as his look goes it's it's pretty cool uh they did something a little bit different to it from the cartoon as well uh especially not going with the uh batman and robin look thank god that works great for the cartoon doesn't translate so well to real life. Uh, as far as this goes, uh, Bane, pretty recognizable too. Kind of a cool profile to it. Uh, put that at B tier. Similarly, we've got Batman, which again is a cowl technically. It's not really a mask, but it's close enough. And then we got into this discussion of like, oh, wait, are we going to add every superhero then? No, we're going we're gonna, to, the buck stops here. All right. That, Batman's just a legend, especially when it comes to the mask classic great profile there's a reason why you know it's it's highly copied i wouldn't quite put it at s tier even though i'm like an og batman fan he's my favorite of you know the the whole group the whole crew really even though i don't like the dc movies like just as a as a hero he just uh, appeals to me but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and put him at a tier all right then we've got the weird werewolf mask from creep if y'all are familiar with this little independent horror film Highly recommend it. I like the sequel a lot, too. Um, just a wolf mask, but the juxtaposition of it with what's happening in the movie and how abruptly, like, it shows up 
and kind of the story behind it. It is very eerie. Like, it definitely creeps me out a bit, but it loses some points in uniqueness factor. I think that's part of the point, though. If it was, like, too unique, it wouldn't have the same effect. I'm going to put it at B tier. The Donnie Darko Rabbit Mask. Love this thing. Classic movie. I've rewatched it lately. It doesn't hold up quite as well as when you're, you know, an edgy teenager, but uh, the extended cut especially is is pretty solid, and there's some really great, great moments in it. I especially like the Patrick Swayze subplot. To me, that's kind of my favorite part of the movie. But anyways, this mask, definitely iconic look, very cool looking, eye-catching. Uh, I could almost put it at S tier, I think. Like, it's one of those things where almost everybody probably even if they don't know the movie they know what it is like they've seen it before i'm gonna put that at s tier all right we got the psychiatrist dude from the night breed i always love the look of this mask it is very scary i kind of wish like we honestly had more of it without him taking it off it is with the button eyes and everything it's just sort of like a different take on sort of the burlap sack look and uh i like it a lot not as not as classic as some of these, but I'm going to put that at B tier. Jason, hockey mask, S tier. Like, talk about taking, like, the simplest thing, just a hockey mask, and just through a little bit of extra paint, a little bit of adjustment in the look of it, and then pairing it with this just monstrous figure and the machete, of course, like, legendary, legendary. Like, people around the world, for thanks to him... Everyone looks at a hockey mask and they don't think of hockey first. They probably think of Jason. All right, we've got this dude from Dark Souls. He's like the master or something. I'm actually not like a Dark Souls player, but there's so many like cool things in that game. And given that Dark Souls is pretty popular among metalheads, I believe Fainer recommended this one and said like, yeah, that, that he should be in there. It's a cool look. I, I like I like his vibe. I like how it's like not uh, symmetrical too. Also has a very obviously influenced from like old Greek like tragedy masks like for like an opera or a play or something. Pretty cool. Uh, is it as legendary as some of this other stuff? I don't know. I'm biased because I'm not like a Dark Souls player again. But just as far as the look of it goes, it's it's pretty neat. I'm gonna put it at a. I'm gonna put it C tier. Majora's Mask. Big Zelda fan. Uh, another classic here put that at A tier. It's not quite at S tier, but brings back instant memories just looking at it every time. And very striking. I love how colorful it is. It's a very unique design. It's interesting too, because I, I kind of notice new things about it every time I look at it. Like even right now, I'm noticing like how heart-shaped it is, but then they've turned this like heart shape into something far more ominous and scary. All right, we got the Guy Fox mask that I am covering as part of V for Vendetta. Really cool, another sort of iconic look, instantly recognizable. Uh, simple, too, but very effective. I'm going to put that at A tier. Michael Myers, the classic William Shatner mask. He definitely belongs up top, too. I'm going to, if Jason's S tier, then Michael's got to be S tier, too, I think. Like, just classic look. You see it, you know what it is. I'd argue that Jason has a little bit more of a striking look, but it works better for Michael to be a little bit more subdued because he's not like the the same type of slasher that Jason is. All right, the Phantom of the Opera, a classic, another simple but effective thing where if somebody did it now, it'd be kind of like, whatever, dude. But for the time, I think this was a very eye-catching, interesting thing to do. And now from, from that day forward, anytime you saw a half mask, you, you thought Phantom of the Opera. I don't think it's quite as cool or striking as some of these other things, but it's it's important. I'm going to give it B tier. <laughs> we got Jim Carrey's The Mask. Uh, this is interesting, too, because you're actually almost ranking two things. You got the, the actual wooden mask that he puts on and then what he looks like after he puts it on. This, this green dude. Um, love this movie growing up and actually introduced my kids to it recently. It still still holds up pretty well. There's there's some jokes in there that would not fly in a movie script today. But um, yeah, it's 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 a it's an interesting look. It's not quite as like. Interesting or unique as some of these other things, I would say. I want to put it at C tier. Hannibal Lecter's little mask that they put on him so that he doesn't bite anybody in transportation. Another iconic look, simple but effective. 
Uh, this definitely caught my eye when I was Googling images again. And great film, Anthony Hopkins, amazing actor. But just based on the mask, even, I just think it adds like this extra level of just like this animal. It, it really captures the fact that he's this classy guy, but with this animal inside of him. And it really sort of brings out that savageness. So I'm going to put that at A tier. <laughs> We've got Zorro, classic Zorro. Um, again, one of those things where, like, he has defined what this simple black mask is. Like, somebody puts on one of these, it's hard not to think of Zorro. But it's it's a very simple look. There's nothing really, like, special to it. I'm going to put it at C tier. All right, well, we're in Helmet Tory again. We got Darth Vader. But another classic design. Great profile. Love the, the skull look to it, obviously. You know, man after my own heart, of course. And it's it's unique. It's a very different kind of thing. I mean, Darth's got to go at S tier. And then finally, we've got the spooky, scary mask from Goosebumps that gets stuck on your face. Um, this scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Like, even still to this day, I anything to do with, like, claustrophobia and, like, body horror, too, it, it's, like, the best of both worlds. Because anything where it's, like, you're, like, stuck in something or you're, like, buried alive or whatever, or, like, you can't remove something from you... Plus, like, that weird body horror where something about you has been, like, contorted and changed. It's it's both of those. It's the best of... It's the worst of both worlds, really. And so, cool image, too. Very iconic cover. Probably the best Goosebumps story, too, we were saying. It's, it's a cool look, too. Uh, the one that they did in the show looks like garbage, but uh, the, the one on the, the cover is pretty neat. I'm going to put that at B tier. And there you go. I know I could go on and on. And we even started discussing like, what about this? What about this? What about this? But I think that is plenty. I've been going on here for like 26 minutes for the recording. I'm going to have to edit this down a little bit. But yeah, those are my <laughs> rankings of metal masks. And then also some like horror and pop culture masks. Let me know down in the comments which mask is your favorite and also who did I leave out that you definitely would have included? Who would you have ranked higher? More importantly though, stick around. I got plenty more videos coming right after this one. Not not goofy <laughs> kind of like one-off ones like this, but actual tier lists of band discographies, interviews with bands, album reviews for new releases, you name it, we've got it. So plenty of reasons to subscribe again if you have not already. Although I can't imagine how you would wind up on this particular video as the first video you find from me, but there it is. And again, join us on Discord to chat or also support me on Patreon. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.